You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Live Worldwide Podcast. Praise God, praise God. We thank God tonight. We thank you, Angel Sessions, tonight for that beautiful intro, The Great I Am. And we need to know tonight that there is nobody greater than the God that we serve, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he is the only 
great I am. We want to thank you again, our faithful listeners, for tuning in again tonight to the Transforming Lives Radio Bible Show. This is Pastor Virginia Sanderson, also known as Pastor V of the Divine Church of Deliverance, a non-denominational ministry out of Florence, South Carolina. We broadcast to you live every Thursday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time by way of Jerry Ross Live Worldwide Broadcasting Radio out of Baltimore, Maryland. Let us stop just a moment before we go any further. And let us give honor to the great I Am, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who makes this show possible. And without him, we will not be able to come before you on Thursday night at no time to bring you this word. Pause with me just a few minutes. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for this opportunity to come again this Thursday night before your people to give them a word that is able to transform their lives and give them a changed heart and a renewed thinking. Lord, we ask tonight that as this word go out over this vanity country, touch the heart of somebody, that they will have a changed heart, a renewed mind, and that they will be transformed by the word, and that they will turn their heart and their mind to you. We thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And again, we welcome you all to the Transforming Lives Bible Radio, where you can hear a word from the Lord that will change and transform your life. Our topic tonight is forgiveness and spiritual restoration. Our supported scripture will come from the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. And it reads, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Verse 2. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. And verse 3. 4. If a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth. Himself. Oh my God. What a word, what a word, what a word. We thank God for this topic tonight because it is certainly time that we, as the people of God, we need to take a look at ourselves and we need to be transparent and recognize that just because. We are in the body of Christ and that we have chosen to connect ourselves with some form of denomination of people. We need to understand that we are no better than those who have not yet connected with a body of people and we are no better than those who are connected and yet they still find themselves falling by the wayside. Some of us have become strengthened in our spiritual walk, yet some of us are still very immature and weak in the faith, thereby we continue to fall along the way. But continue to listen in as Apostle Paul teach us how we are to work with those who are still weak in the faith. Because let us look at verse 1. He tells us in verse 1, and I hope that you have your Bibles out and look at the word along with us tonight. As we discuss verse 1 of Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1, he tells us that no matter how close a walk 
we have with the Lord. Remember now, he's not talking to the unsaved people. He's talking to those of us who say that we are already Christians, those of us who claim that we have already become strengthened in our faith and in our walk with the Lord, who say that we are strong and we have already figured out how to do this thing without falling down. He said, so since you have figured this out, he said, know that we, since we have figured out how to walk with the Lord, don't think that sometimes we are not going to falter. My God, my God. Therefore, those of us who are weak, that we think that we can stand in judgment of others, just because they fall down, my God, and just because they fail, my God, and just because they fell down by the wayside, don't think that we are better than they are. And just because we don't see them as being as saved and sanctified, or that maybe we think that they are not as deep. You know, some of us think that we real deep. You know, people say that, oh, they so deep in the Lord. That's what we want people to think about us. Or we don't see them so deep in the faith as we are. Then we don't see them as good a Christian as we are. So we have a tendency to look down our nose at them. But the Bible teaches against judgment, and fault-finding, but rather we are instructed that when we who are more matured in our Christian walk and who are more spiritually strong, we are to be a light to the weak when they falter and become overpowered by their own sinful, indulgent appetite. Yes, that's right. You heard me right. When they are overpowered by their own sinful, indulgent appetite, my God, he did not tell us to participate or support them in their sinful acts, however, we are encouraged when our sisters and brothers fall. We are not to act or self apart ourselves as judges, but we are to show them love and kindness and approach them with a spirit of meekness, be gentle and compassionate in the way we witness to them so as not to shame them but to shed light to the dark place where they have fallen. Why? Because the goal is to help expose their weakness whereby they might be strengthened again in the word of the Lord Jesus Christ and be restored back to the place from which they have fallen. Otherwise, to do it any other way, we might become holier than thou or holy in our own spirit man. And we ourselves now are subject to becoming tempted and fall into the very sin in which we pass judgment on our fellow man. So we don't want to put ourselves in the position that we will fall into the sin that we are passing judgment 
on our sisters and brothers when we stand pointing fingers at them saying, aha, aha, because they have fallen. When we stand thinking we are better than they are because we have not yet fallen in that particular sin. Because rest assured, we may not have fallen in that sin, but we have certainly sinned in some other thing. My Lord, my Lord. Now let us look at verse 2. Verse 2 tells us, Bear ye one another's burden. And when you bear one another's burden, according to the word of God, it says you so fulfill the law of Christ. I'm sure some of you out there asking the question, what you talking about, Pastor? How do I bear somebody else's burden? How do I fulfill the law when I bear somebody else's burden? We are not being asked to glorify the sinful actions with those who have fallen by the wayside. But we are instructed to recognize that they are still weak in the faith. They are still immature in spiritual growth. And we need to recognize that they are still battling with trying to overcome worldly pleasures and fleshly desires. We are also instructed to sympathize and show mercy and love. We are not to our feet a fallen sister or brother. We're not to take the word and beat them up with it. Our goal is to win them. Even Jesus said, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. So when we were out there in the world, when we were satisfying our flesh, when we were enjoying the sins of the flesh and satisfying our lust, and nobody was taking the word of God and beating us up, and we wanted somebody to empathize with us and have mercy on us. So who are we now? Because we have been delivered, and because we have overcome, who are we now? That we are going to take people's sins and not and take the word of God and be over somebody else's head. Who are we now that we can't wait on somebody else the way somebody else waited on us. So we cannot browbeat people with their sin, but we are to show them love and kindness and show mercy unto them the way the Lord showed mercy and kindness unto us. Show it to our sisters and brothers. They're already beat up. They already got us tired and broken. Show them some love now. Love them until they learn how to love themselves. The only time that we should be looking down on anyone is when we are reaching down a helping hand to them to pick them up from the place from where they have fallen down. How in Jesus' name can we help the process of making people feel forgiven and understand that they can be restored by God if we speak unkind words to them in our witnessing when they are already beat up, they're already bruised up, they're already broken down, and, and they're already hurting because of their own contributions of sinful actions that just already set the life right out of them. Oh, no, no, no. That is not our assignment. 
God has assigned us as his agents to serve in the process of shouldering up the burden of others. While they are weak, we are to pray with them. We are to feed them the word of God. We are to keep them encouraged. We are to share our own restoration experiences with them. See, we don't want to tell nobody how bad it was with us. We don't want to tell nobody how we were down in the trenches. We don't want to tell nobody that somebody found us out in the crack house. We don't tell nobody that we was laying in the alley that night. We don't want to tell nobody nothing about that. We just want to tell them all of the good stuff. My Lord, share those kind of things with people that are falling by the wayside. Let them know it ain't always been good. I ain't always been saved. Share your experiences with them that they will know, you know what? If the Lord restored you, I know I've got a chance too that he'll forgive me and I can be restored all soon so that they know that they can be strengthened in the Lord again and they can become strong enough to stand on their own. Then when you do this, when you complete your assignment that the Lord has given you, then the Bible says that you have fulfilled the law of Christ, meaning now when you do that, you have pleased God, my Lord. All God wants you to do, you forgive them and let God restore them. My Lord, let's look at verse 3 as we hasten on. The Bible says, for, all right, look out here. Here it is. Let me ask you now, look at this. This is why you better be careful. The Bible says, but if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceive himself. My Lord, in this verse, the Apostle Paul rebuked the Galatians, against high-minded thinking. Y'all know how some of us, oh, my Lord, you know, we ain't muddy and dirty and stinky no more. Somebody pulled us out of that muddy hole that we was in, and somebody gave us a bath and put us on some clothes in the dry, put us on some spiritual clothing, and we ain't that stinking hog no more. We ain't a hog pen no more. My Lord, my Lord, and we don't smell that pig no more that was slapping in the trough no more. My Lord, and, 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 and we walk around the high-minded folks now. But Paul rebuked the Galatians against that high-minded thinking, such as bigotry, self-conceit. And y'all know how conceited some of us can be. My God, and intolerance. I, I know we be better than them. Ain't no such thing. Paul rebuked that kind of high-minded thinking. And in my mind, I, I can hear him ask the question, just who do you think you are? My Lord, we need to ask ourselves that question. Well, who do I think I am when I start thinking high-minded, when I know where the Lord brought me from, when I remember where I was found at, when I know where I was, when God found me. No, 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 we need to be saying, Lord, I thank you for where you brought me from. Let me get my mind up out the car. Bring my mind back down here so I can help this sister, so I can help this brother. My Lord, have mercy, Jesus. See, Paul was reminding them not to be fickle and double-minded in their judgment and teaching, lest they will backslide into legalistic teaching and stop believing that spiritual freedom is for all who choose to believe in Jesus Christ. You see, just because we know this Bible, and some of us may have a very astute understanding of what it means, we may know and understand God's word, but we don't know what is in the heart of man. Only God knows the heart of mankind, thereby only the Lord can pass judgment on what anybody does. We better recognize that at any moment, because we all are still in the flesh and not yet taking on our immortal bodies, we can be overtaken by the care of this world and be deceived when we think so highly of ourselves that our lives 
are completely removed from sin's reach. We are never completely removed from sin's reach. Not so. We better be real today with ourselves. Paul said, let this flesh die daily. You better keep yourself before the Lord every day. Be your own man in the mirror and stop judging your sisters and brothers. Have a heart to forgive them. Release them because God is able and will restore them if they sincerely ask him with a sincere heart. He will transform them and make them new again because God is the only one, my Lord have mercy, that can judge the heart of man. He has not left that power. He has not given the responsibility. And he has not given the privilege to any man or woman, boy or girl. He's the only one that can stand as a right for judge. And let me tell you, he will forgive and he will restore any one of us if we fall by the wayside. And when we have a sincere heart and we come before our master, and we cry out to him and say, Father, forgive me. Hallelujah. Cleanse me. Create in me a clean heart. And renew that right spirit in me. I declare unto you. He said, if you come unto me, I will in no wise cast you out. And only a God that loves pure from his heart can make such an offer such as that. And mean what he said. So I say to you, dear hearts, let us, if we have been doing such a thing, let us this night, let us put a stop, let us cease and desist this night, pass the judgment on one another. Why? Because Paul told us when a man thinks he's something, when he's nothing, we deceive our own self. But he said, even our very works, the Lord said. It's no more than fifth or eight. It's not about who do the most. It's not even about who people think do the best job. It's what the Lord has to say about it. God has the last say so on the matter. He makes the decision about who did the most and who did the best. God has the time to say so. There's no big eyes and no little Jews. Hallelujah in God's plan. He has the final analysis and the last Say so, and I'm glad about it. So don't you concern yourself when people look at you and think that you're nobody. God is the one. Hallelujah. That holds the key in the plan to your life. He's the decision maker about you. Stop listening at what the naysayers, what they have to say about you. Turn your face to the master and get your answers from him. Hallelujah. See what he thinks. What is his report about you? And stop listening at what man's report is about you. Because that's where the difference is made. It's whatever the Lord says. Amen, amen, amen. I want to say to you tonight, I want that word have blessed you. I know it blessed somebody. If it didn't bless you, guess what? I'm sitting right here in the studio. I, it blessed me. If you didn't get blessed, it blessed me tonight. And I thank the Lord for it. But I tell you, I know that the Lord has forgiven me so many times. I tell you, and the Lord has restored me. I fall down a lot, and I tell you, I thank God that he has picked me up every time I reach my hand up in sincerity. I thank God that he picked me back up. So that's all you got to do. If you have fallen, don't you stay there. Don't you stay. Reach your hand up tonight. Look up and live. Reach your hand up and you call on God to get me up out of this place. I don't want to stay here another minute. Pull me up. Right now, beat me up, Lord. You know how they say, beat me up, Scotty. Don't you call on Scotty. You say, call, call on Jesus' name. God, he can't pull you up. You better call on Jesus' name. We want to thank you again tonight, hallelujah, for tuning in to Transform Your Lives by our radio. We are sponsored by Jerry Ross Live Worldwide, part of the Power 21.0. Remember, our shows can be heard on demand at Jerry Ross Live Worldwide Podcast Channel 14 and can be viewed on YouTube. 
follow Pastor D on Facebook and Twitter. Also, I periscope live on Sunday morning services at 11.30 a.m. and Wednesday night Bible study at 6.15 p.m. I pray that you have been blessed tonight by this broadcast, and I hope that your life will be transformed by the Word of God. And we sang Angel Sessions again. Oh, she's such a precious young lady, and she sang so beautiful. We want you to sound her music, and, and we want you to go out and, and buy her music. She's just a blessing heading into this broadcast. And we thank her again. And again, she brings us in, and tonight we don't know what she's going to take us out on. But whatever it is, we know it's going to be beautiful. But we ask you again, my friends. Next Thursday night again at 8 p.m., we want you to tune in. Hallelujah to Transform and Live Radio Bible Show. This is Pastor B. We'll be listening for you all next week. Have a blessed week until next week. Good night and be transformed. Amen. Will you be ready? Thank you.